industry inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. In 1982, at a Titanic Historical Society meeting, a lady was handed a microphone. Once she did, she began to explain how the Titanic broke up. While explaining, she held up four fingers to represent the four funnels and how they were separated during the breakup. Instead of believing her, a speaker called Lou Gorman took the microphone away from this lady and told her to be quiet. Lou Gorman then announced that she was wrong and falsely explained that the Titanic's funnels did fall off but the ship sank in one piece. By today's standards, this is considered inappropriate behaviour. However, it happened three years before the shipwreck was discovered, and at the time, many people believed the ship sank in one piece, as it were based on conclusive evidence by Lord Mersey in the British Inquiry. Many survivors who claimed the Titanic broke in two were ignored in favour of, quote, factional evidence, unquote. One of these survivors was Ruth Becker, and she was the lady at that meeting. Alongside Margaret Brown, Ruth became one of the most recognisable Titanic survivors. However, the story of her survival was heartbreaking, and witnessing an event at the age of 12 scared her. She didn't talk about it until she retired from teaching, but Ruth dedicated herself to giving interviews until her passing at the age of 90. This is her story. Ruth Elizabeth Becker was born in India on the 28th of October, 1899. She came from an American family and she was the eldest of four children. Her mother was called Nellie and she was likely a housewife, though her occupation isn't mentioned. Her father, Alan, was a Lutheran missionary and was in charge of an orphanage in Gunther. Ruth grew up in India and she lived happily there with her family, but by 1912, Ruth's youngest brother Richard fell ill with a serious disease. There was no medical treatment that could be provided for him, and if he would stay in India, he would have no chance of survival. The physician suggested the family should return to the States, but rather than travelling together, Nellie, Ruth, younger sister Marion, and Richard decided to travel to the States. Alan decided to stay behind in India. The Beckers travelled to England where they booked second class tickets on the RMS Titanic. They boarded the ship in Southampton on the 10th of April, but upon boarding, Nellie had misgivings about the voyage. However, a person noticed Nellie and he reassured her that the Titanic is safe and that nothing was going to happen. While the Titanic was sailing towards New York City, Ruth would spend her time looking after Marion. The pair spent the voyage playing games on deck, exploring various public rooms, and were allowed to visit the library. However, the room Ruth could remember was a second-class dining room, scrubbing it, the cutlery, and the linen napkins as beautiful and new. On the night of the April 14th, the Titanic struck an iceberg and was beginning to sink. Ruth and her family were still asleep and didn't notice the collision. When the engines had stopped, though, the family woke up. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Knowing something was unusual, Nellie got out of bed and opened the cabin door. She asked the steward what had happened. In response, he said, quote, We've had a little accident, unquote, and it was going to be fixed before the ship continued her journey. Reassuring them, he also suggested that the family should go back to bed. Instead, Nellie gathered all the children and from their cabin on F deck, they headed to the upper decks. When they reached B deck, Ruth remembered climbing an iron ladder from B to A deck. When they were on the A-deck, Ruth recalled saying she saw passengers refusing to get into lifeboats because they wanted to stay on the Titanic where they felt safe. Somehow, the Beckers weren't planning to stay on the ship. She also recalled the number of distress rockets that were lit into the air. They went over to the starboard side where they were waiting for the lifeboats to be lowered. However, Nellie was concerned about how cold the weather was. So, she asked Ruth if she could return to their cabin which was located on F deck, to collect extra blankets. When she returned to the boat deck, Ruth unexpectedly saw Nellie, Marion and Richard inside lifeboat 11 and they have lowered away. Nellie cried to Ruth to get into the next boat. Listening to her advice, Ruth ran towards the next lifeboat, which was lifeboat 13. Upon approaching, Ruth asked a crewman if she could board the lifeboat. In response, he threw her in. After lowering from the boat deck at 1.40am, Lifeboat 13 lowered away from A-deck at 1.34am. While the lifeboat was continuing to lower, 
Ruth and the other occupants noticed jerking down at uneven angles. The lifeboat was nearly caught by an enormous stream of water which was coming from the condenser exhaust which was produced by the pumps. Ruth witnessed some of the occupants using oars and spars to push the boat into the water. However, two problems then occurred. One was that the equipment that was lowering the lifeboat was jammed because of a thick layer of red paint, paralyzing the apparatus. The second was that when the wash from the exhaust pushed lifeboat 13 under lifeboat number 15, while it was lowering into the water. Luckily, all occupants in both lifeboats survived thanks to the bravery of fireman Frederick Barrett and seaman Robert Hopkins, who cut the ropes to free lifeboat 13. While sitting inside lifeboat 13, Ruth helped to distribute the blankets she held onto the stokers. From her account of the sinking, Ruth relived the event when she saw the Titanic sinking. Throwing away looking at the Titanic, it was a beautiful sight outlined against the starry sky. Every porthole and saloon blazing with light. It was impossible to think anything could be wrong with such an enormous ship were it not for the tilt downwards towards the bow." Unquote. She also recalled seeing passengers and crew either jumping into the ocean or standing on the decks. Some were even leaning against the railings of the ship. She had witnessed the Titanic broken in two. Quote, we could see the port lights go under one by one until there was an awful explosion and the boilers bursting. And then the ship seemed to break right down the middle. And after a bit, go down. Unquote. Following the sinking, Ruth remembered the screams of those who were in the water. In one interview, she asked, quote, You wouldn't like to hear the screams of women, would you? Unquote. This haunting question refers to the pain she felt for those who had no chance of survival. Lifeboat 13 never went back to pick up survivors and rowed away quickly from the scene. The lifeboat floated on the ocean for a long time, and when the dawn broke, Ruth and all the occupants saw RMS Carpathia, and while rowing towards the steamer, they sang the song, Pull for the Shore Sailor. Lifeboat 13 was rescued by the RMS Carpathia at 6.30am. When she boarded the Cunard steamer, she hunted the decks to find Nellie and her younger siblings. Hours after searching for them, a woman approached her asking, quote, Is your name Ruth Becker? Unquote. When Ruth said she was her, the woman said, quote, I found your mother and she's been looking everywhere for you. Unquote. Although she had a happy reunion with her family, Ruth saw the sights of the widows, mothers, daughters and sisters standing against the rail waiting in vain for their loved ones. The family arrived in New York City on the 18th of April. When they disembarked, the family were stopped by reporters who wanted to ask Nellie questions about the family's experience. In response, Nellie said, quote, Don't ask me anything. Ask Ruth. She'll tell you everything. Unquote. Afterwards, she said to Ruth, quote, don't you dare tell anyone you were on the Titanic, unquote. A year later, Alan left India and joined the family in America. In 1920, she graduated from Worcester College and became a school teacher. In 1924, she married, and in the following years, she had three children. Sadly, the couple divorced and Ruth never remarried. When she retired, Ruth began to open up about her experiences on the Titanic. But when the Titanic was discovered, she objected to people visiting the wreck since they were disturbing a grave site. In 1990, she went on her first cruise since the Titanic, where she travelled to Mexico. Ruth died that year on the 6th of July at the age of 90. During the Titanic disaster, Ruth Becker and her family were in the wrong place at the wrong time. The story of her survival is tragic, and no 12-year-old should have to go through this horrific ordeal. Yet, it remains one of the most well-known stories in the history of of the RMS Titanic. And I want to give a massive big thank you to Hannah of the Historical Travel Server for once again narrating this video. This was a really special video to me and Hannah, you've done an excellent job. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, Departing from the Dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.